Okay, we are back. I am doing those seven challenge runs for the more experienced players, and I'm going to continue this series for now for brand new players. I like to mix it up, have a little something for everybody. And I just remembered that we are about to head up to the Well of Health and try on all this gear. It's going to be Christmas time. One, two, one, two. We can do uh, two shots if we want. And the second shot will probably trigger the golem, which I don't love because the crab will turn around and often just kill the golem right away. But nope, we got lucky that time. Let's keep moving up. Going back to floor two, I believe. So yes, when you see this well of health, if you can save it for later, I highly recommend it. Where is the stairs? There they are. Where is, where are, where are the stairs? And I don't mind fighting a little bit because when we get in that well, it's going to not only heal us, but also give us back um, all of our food. We'll go completely full. So I'm actually going to do a little trick I like to do. Maybe I should just go down. I should have done it on floor four because we can fight the slimes as well. But I'm actually just going to kind of sit here. I'm going to fight some. You can just um, hold space and go to sleep and the wandering monsters will come and fight you. And we'll gain some experience. Look at this. We get some meat from the crabs, which is very nice. And you can fight this slime here. Let's get this, uh, keep getting this golem back up. It's pretty nice. This is this is a really nice wand early on, isn't it? You can fight this knoll. Hey, no. Oopsies, misclick. If I, when I'm misclicking a lot, I'll zoom in because it makes me a little more accurate. I'm actually going to go towards the slime. Oopsies. There we go. And I can fight a little bit longer while I still have some extra food here. Well, I don't have food. I'm starving, but I can starve for a little while. Then remember, we have to walk a ways up to floor two, but not that far. I think I'll wait till I'm around like 30 health. Maybe after this crab. A little bit more. I know watching the farm is very entertaining, I bet, but it's something good. Like if you can get to level eight before goo. Oh, we got a hand axe too. Look at that. You are going to be in a very strong position. So I like this one quite a bit. This one, if you do have a good glyph, it can be very useful. At least one point is pretty nice. Um, but I think I'll go with, oh, and this one. Oh, right, 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 right. Don't we have a horn of plenty? We do. So this talent with the horn of plenty is amazing. And I will show you later when we do the demon halls and I don't think I'll do the, the last boss fight. Oh, I didn't mean to go down. I meant to go up. But when we do the demon halls, I'm going to do a little guide on that, the last floor. And uh, I'll show you a great trick with that talent in the Horn of Plenty. The flies, I almost feel like we can just fight. I'm not too concerned about their damage at the moment. Maybe we'll get the Guardian to come up and help us. Yeah, nice. Very cool. All right, let's go. Well of health time. See all these wonderful items we got. Okay, I'm going I'm to keep fighting because I still have enough health to go. Yes. Okay. Let's see. There it is. So before I get in it, let's go ahead and try on some items. I know this is cursed, so it doesn't hurt to put that on right away. I don't have any other armor I want to try on anyways, so let's go ahead and put you on. Not cursed. Lovely. Let's put you on. Also not cursed. Lovely. So which one do we want to try? I'm pretty sure if you have an enchantment on it, the um, chances of being cursed are, are quite low. Let's try it on. Not cursed. Lovely. Let's try you on. Cursed. Ah, you son of a... I would have really liked to uncurse this one or try that on instead, but well is what it is. So now we'll put on this other cursed equipment. And I believe we are ready. So we can't unequip it because it's cursed. That is the issue. So that is why... Oh, look at that. It's plus one. Nice. That's going to be very useful. I could even put an upgrade scroll on it and my upgrade from here. We get it down to 14 strength. Use it as soon as we start the caves, but... We might not need to do that. Okay, let's go ahead and get in here. Oh, look at that. Curses are gone. You can re-equip this item here. And 
I think we... Which one should we use? I like the unstable one because obviously it has the enchantment on it already. That could be fun. Of course, whichever one is plus one is... I'd rather do the more damage, but this should be fun. And then... Let's go ahead and make ourselves a meat pie while we've got a little bit of the ingredients. I guess we gotta fight the mouse. Hmm, nice. That's a good hit. So, if you click up here on the recipes, you can just kind of browse over all the different stuff they have. There's a lot of very useful things. It's definitely overwhelming at first. I didn't use this for quite a while, and then I just started, like, dabbling my toes, you know, dipping my toes. Did a couple things here and there, but one thing I highly recommend is making this meat pie recipe. Um, as you can see, it costs six energy to use and we don't have it. So we'll click on the plus down here for energy and we'll have to sacrifice something to it. Oh, let's sacrifice. Um, frost potions are usually good, but you can also use all the seeds. And that's kind of all I have at the moment. So yeah, let's go ahead and throw in um, a storm vine. And when you're choosing seeds, mage royals are very useful to keep. And the green ones, the healing ones are also very useful. Sun grass. Okay, just enough to get six, and that should be good. So look at our inventory here. So interesting thing with the Horn of Plenty, you need to feed it food for it to uh, to power up. And each food will give it plus one. I think a meat gives it like plus half. So if you look at the meat pie, we gave it two foods and a meat. So that's two and a half worth, right? But if we feed it this meat pie, I'm pretty sure it gets plus four. Yes, so that's pretty dang good. Pretty much worth it, in my opinion. Also, the sandals. I don't know if I'm going to use them, but the way they work is you feed them seeds, and then they increase your chances of finding more seeds. So if you are going to use the sandals, I would recommend feeding them seeds as early on as possible. Get to start leveling them up early, because you're going to start getting the, you know, the returns on your investment earlier as well. That's kind of the same with the food. You know, we level up as quick as we can, and then we can use it later if we wanted to be really fancy we could get it up to level 10 and then try to transmute it into a other artifact and that artifact should come as plus 10 as well that the upgrades will carry over but i actually really like the horn of plenty with the warrior because of this talent that we mentioned earlier so we can take a little snack and we'll get 100 percent damage resistance so there are a couple um telegraphed attacks laser beams that you can see coming a turn before they hit you and you take a little snack of food and then you instantly are 100 percent damage resistant and the laser beam will do zero damage so we can actually just use the wand we don't have to worry about the surprise attacks and i may go ahead and feed the sandals in nature i don't know maybe i won't i almost i'd rather have a ring two rings or maybe a different artifact. Probably going to sell it to the vendor, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm the worst. So let's check, double quick check here. Oh, animated statue on floor one. Right, right. I don't remember what I had. Do you remember? I'm not too concerned about it. We've got some good stuff. I think it had a weapon. You know, I might just pause and run back up there quick. Oh, that's right. That's where my stones were. I threw them at the statue and then I had to run away, remember? <laughs> it has a blazing katana, which has um, a defense modifier on it. So that's no wonder I couldn't do any damage to it. But I guarantee I can do some good damage to it now. And I went and stood in the water in case that blazing katana decides to light me on fire. Yeah, we're going to crush you down. Look, it's attacking the, uh, the golem 100%. Love to see that. Okay, Blazing Katana. That was, This would be sweet. Hey, look, it's plus one. Oh, I love it. You know, I could go all in on this Katana. We need to get it down to uh, 13. Okay, uh, one sec. Oh, wow, I still had this room too. I skipped a lot on floor one because that statue was uh, chasing me. So if we look at my potions, I'm pretty sure I must have picked this one up on floor one. I really don't remember, but I'm going to say it's levitation. No, it's not. So what the heck? Where's the levitation potion? Did I drink it? Or use it for something else? Maybe I did. So to get over these traps then, we're gonna have to just trigger them. So what we should do is, oh, oh, there's a silver potion here. Maybe this is it. I'm just going crazy and drinking stuff. And that was a liquid flame potion. What the heck? So 
maybe I'll, maybe I will take a look back at the replay and see where this potion is cuz I should definitely have one. Hmm. Anyway, it's not going to worry about it too much, but I will go ahead and trigger these then. So I step back because they do do a radius around them and I don't want to get teleported. You can teleport my rock, but I don't want you to teleport me. So I'm just going to throw some items there and then you get teleported to a random place on the floor, which I'll go, I'll go find them and pick them up. So you're going to soccer way up here. So there's, but two stones, a throwing something and some, some old random stuff. Hey, okay. 14, a sword. It's nice that it's not cursed. I might want to identify it because if it is plus one, I'll have 13 strength pretty soon. Okay, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. So I have one more item somewhere. There it is. Alrighty, let's move on. Anyways, just real quick, um, I'm thinking more about using these weapons. And part of this guide over explained for new players is I want to talk about equipment. So these are tier, this is a tier four weapon. Tier five is the strongest. So if we were to go all in with the upgrades and equip this as soon as we can and upgrade it as high as we can, we'll, we'll be pretty good. It blocks damage. It's not going to do as much damage as a tier five weapon, but we will be very strong early and that will carry us into late game and we'll be able to win pretty easily. Same thing with the scale armor. We could hold out for plate, which is a little bit better. Uh, it's better. And... It's not a little bit better, it's better. But if we were to go early on at the scale and try to equip this, um, you know, put all of our upgrades scrolls into it, we will be very much invincible for most of the dungeon, but a little bit later on, we will be a little bit weaker. So it's one of those things where we will trade off being stronger earlier for being a little bit weaker. So the thing I really like to do with this, and if you can manage to do this as well, it'll be quite helpful for your runs. I like to wait and delay what I mean by that is, as long as I have healing potions, and as long as I'm not taking too much damage, and I'm feeling like I'm breaking even or doing decently, I won't um, I won't commit to a build yet, because we can always find something stronger later, or something else I just want to use stylistically, or something I want to just play around with. But if we do find ourselves getting beat too hard, taking too much damage and having an all around tough time, then it is time to pull the trigger and commit. And either one of those items could be good enough. The Blazing Katana sounds like fun. I haven't actually, um, it's one of the new weapons and I haven't used it yet. So I'm stepping back because I'm going to shoot this and shoot the wand here. And I didn't want the Guardian to get stuck in the corridor and have to fight it one at a time. I want to fight them at the same time together. Okay, so the unstable enchantment just made grass. That's Great. So what I often say is the decision I'm going to make is the decision to do nothing because I very often end up just doing nothing and waiting and see, seeing what happens. But it's good to know our options and definitely good to have the options. Okay, so time to fight the first boss. Goo. Let's pick up some stuff here. Thanks, inventory's full though. I actually want to drop these because we don't want the merchant to carry this the range weapon holder. We definitely want the merchant to carry like the scroll holder. Pick up all those. pick up some scrolls. Looks good, right? Let's see, you are also ranged, so maybe I don't want you. Yeah, all I have to do is count them. So I have four scrolls here, and I have one range weapon. That's it. It's good, it's good to double check because sometimes you may end up having one, an extra one. So we'll definitely get the scroll holder from the merchant, assuming we kill Goo, which I am assuming. So, little tricks for Goo. First boss here, if we examine it, we can read a little bit about it. It's gelatinous nature has let it absorb lots of dark energy. Uh, so if it attacks with this energy, you won't live for long. Yes, so main tricks for Goo are running around corners, and also look at this little buff we have here. Floor is locked. While a floor is locked, you will not gain hunger or take damage from starving. So what is useful about that is we will not take starving damage and we can run around this floor and explore it. In particular, we can you know go through grass, just farm up some more, ooh geez, dew drops and seeds and stuff. But we can also look for the hidden boss, not boss, the hidden NPC, the Rat King, which is often kind of tricky to find. 
But while we do this with goo right behind us like that, we are at risk of running into a dead end. So be careful about that. Kind of what we want to do is break goo's line of sight. And sometimes we can do that. Ooh, on the hidden door. There it is. There's a rat king. Great. Glad we found it. So to break line of sight with goo, I think if we go around like right here, yeah, there you go. It lost track of us because of the grass is in the way. And now we can like make you maybe make a little bit of space and let's see how goo ran away. So we would want to do that. If we were trying to explore everything and haven't found this yet and goose chasing us, you want to break line of sight. So now we're, you know, we're free to run around some more and stuff like that. Anyways, let's get into fighting goo. This is a pretty good spot here because we can break line of sight with this piece of grass and we have a little bit of water right here in order to um, purge the caustic ooze. That's goo's big debuff, which will do one damage to you every turn. But, you know, we've got all this free time while we're not taking any hunger hits. So let's go ahead and pick up all this gold, which takes two turns to do because you got to open the chest and you got to pick it up. So that takes kind of a long time. So why not take advantage of the floor being locked here? And now let's go find goo. And be careful not to clip too fast because if you pop out and goo's right next to you and you spam and move, you will um, get hit. We don't want to get hit for free. So I will actually wait a turn let Goo get right next to me because I don't want to break line of sight now. I want Goo to follow me. Don't lose track of where I am, please. That happens sometimes and it can be quite annoying. So be careful cutting corners. And now we're going to go to our little happy spot. Remember that Goo enemies are going to go right where you are. So I'm going to position Goo by stepping exactly where I want. Now I'll go down here. And now we do have to fight it one time. I actually am going to spawn the Guardian. So maybe we just spawn the Guardian. And I get Caustic Ooze right away. So I will, I guess I'll fight. go step in the water here. Oh no. Look at that. I didn't take damage though. Did this, did this grass block it for me? This Guardian it actually makes life a little bit trickier. Because usually you come around the corner and Goo stops channeling because it has no enemy but now since the guardian's there it's gonna keep channeling Ooh, that is trouble i think i'll just go ahead and shoot this and now i do need to step up and just fight it like normal yeah i don't like i don't like that guardian that really messes things up okay so this axe is not plus one i feel like i would rather have a plus one axe than have the enchantment on it so we're just fighting and we're doing okay so goo's enraged we might take some extra damage here take three Okay, here we go. See the channel? See all these little black special effects, these little particles? And Goo made that charge up effect. So this is when we need to break line of sight. So what we will do is actually step down here and Goo immediately stops channeling and decides to chase us instead. So it's actually ideal for RNG wise for Goo to channel because you don't get a counter attack. So I step over here and we just uh, continue this cycle. I get hit with the caustic ooze, unfortunately, but I can just go down here once in the water. Goo is going to heal when Goo walks in the water, which is a bit of a pain, but it's kind of something you got to deal with. I'd rather that happen than me take, you know, a whole bunch of hits from caustic ooze. So we do have to turn and fight here. If we step down, Goo will actually follow me down through the grass, I believe. So get the charge and then we'll move. And we'll just repeat this cycle until we win. And hopefully it works out like that. There's a dodge. I kind of want to step away anyways, though, because we get the surprise attack every time we do that. There we go. And we got Goo. Goo's down. And we're moving on to the prisons. And I think we are ready for that. So double check. Make sure we got our scrolls in place. Fantastic. Okay, so this is an important time for us when we find the first merchant. Why is it important? Because the merchant is guaranteed to have at least one health potion and... At least one scroll of identity. No, okay, always one scroll of identity. Identify one scroll of magic mapping and one scroll of remove curse, which are some of the most important scrolls in the game. To me, at least. I'm going to sell this stuff. I'm not going to use you. You're cursed. And I'm also not going to use you. I'll just sell it. And I'm done using you. So we look here and we... We use our little examine on each little scroll here. So Burkana, unknown. We don't know what it is yet. You are identify. So we know the square is identify. And this one, Kaunan, and you are rage. So that means 
these two one of these is remove curse and one of them is magic mapping that's fantastic and we know that this is healing already so i'll definitely buy healing and i'll definitely buy the ankh the ankh brings you back to death brings you back to life if you die by accident like by surprise that's the main thing for the ankh is sometimes you get killed by surprise so and i'll also will buy both of these kind of want to make a note to self that it's Burkanan and Kaunan because you know we have other things that are not identified but we know okay Kaunan and Burkanan just like gotta drill this into my mind you know magic mapping this is probably magic mapping this is probably remove curse and I think with that in mind I think we are good to go So stay tuned tomorrow for next episode where we explore the prison some more and we learn to deal with our first ranged attackers. Anyways, I'll see you then. Thanks. Cheers.